in AWS, uh, we created and uh, configured Lambda function to extract uh, source data from Azuna API. And we finally stopped, uh, actually did the step to create and configure Lambda function to transform data. And this is uh, where we stopped. So today uh, we are going to uh, like uh, start from step five. But uh, before we do that, uh, we will spend some time uh, to ensure that everybody uh, who participated in uh, part number one uh, is, is done with this step. Dmitry, were you able to complete and execute the transform lambda function? Last time it creates the file, so I think there's a stopped. Uh, and I realized after uh, the previous uh, webinar that I did, I, uh, we, we did it uh, not the best way. What we did, uh, we changed the function code to hard code uh, the raw file key value. Actually, uh, Lambda function uh, like for testing allows us uh, to configure um, any parameter we need. So there is no need to change the script. We can keep it as is. Instead of it, we can configure the, the test event. I, I will show it, but I, I just want to like, recall uh, so that uh, everybody remembers um, the connection between uh, the export, extract Lambda function and transform. Extract Lambda function, what it does, uh, it takes the uh, source data and just store it, uh, just stores um, it as is in a S3 bucket folder. Lambda transform function, it takes uh, the output of the extract function, uh, like that it, it takes the uh, JSON raw data file as input and it processes it, transforms it, it and save it as a JSON file. So, uh, like right now, the code uh, of this Lambda function is configured the way uh, when Lambda function uh, like is being executed uh, as a part of step function. So, we can't just click test and execute it. But there is a little trick we can do uh, to ensure it works properly. So, what you need to do, open your S3 folder, uh, raw data, to process, you can follow steps. And let me know uh, if you don't have any, any files here to process. I don't, uh, have. I don't have. You process it. Uh, so uh, like uh, everyone who doesn't uh, see the file in this raw data folder, just go to the extract uh, data lambda function and execute it. It should work. Just click test. There is nothing to configure and configure here. Just click test. And if everything was executed correctly, you should you should see uh, the JSON file here. I can see it. That's good. Just copy it. Then what we do? Ensure, Dimitri, it's especially for you. Ensure that you change the code back as it it was like before. We we change it. It should have this value s3 object equals events and this parameter this is a transform a function right transform function and it's like main uh, function lambda handler because in the end of the previous part session number one we hard coded it and it's not best it's not the best way to do it yeah so the string 98 correct just ensure it looks like the same way I'm showing. Yeah. Okay. And uh, me, next I noticed step. that for extract data, I still had three seconds timeout. So it was timeout for the first run. There is it to overcome? It was like four seconds to run. As a next step, click here, click the triangle to the right of the test button, and uh, when select configure test event, it's a Lambda function opportunity allows to specify any parameter we want to pass to the Lambda function. So instead of hard coding this value in the uh, Lambda function script, we are going to pass this uh, parameter value into our Lambda function. So what you need to do here, you should copy paste the word.
I hear some voice. Uh, copy uh, e-value for the object created in uh, raw data to process folder and put it. Okay, uh, let me copy paste it in the chat. Where is the chat? It's here. Substitute uh, this part of this string uh, to the uh, JSON file value you have. We need to wait. One click save. And we are all set to test it. And we need to show right not now. file name, but full path. What's the path that you show? I pasted it to the uh, Discord channel. Just ensure you insert it the same way. It 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 full way. Um, it's folder raw data, then folder to process and uh, the file. Beginning. So right now in the we to migrate should uh, test right. After you do this, uh, just click test. And can you show me the Python code just to check that I have the the right the same one? You need to ensure just uh, about this string that it looks like like I'm showing. In string ninety seven uh, S three bucket should be uh, your S three bucket name because I made a mistake and add add Zuna ETL project, but uh, in my case it called in a different way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because bucket folder is unique, and uh, for your own project, you should have like your own unique value. So in in my case, you see now it's two files, but if I refresh the page, I see three files already. So it means that uh, the uh, transform lambda function executed successfully. Is it okay for you now? Yes, I can see my CSV file. That's good. We can even download it and open to ensure it, it has contains valid content. Dimitri, is it okay for you? No, something something wrong. I have the error or is no ah, it's it's couldn't find my, my file that I specified test event, so maybe I'm doing something wrong. Troubleshoot this uh, as a first step. Uh, just double check that your uh, to process raw data to process folder is not empty. Yeah, yeah, I, I have the file there. In the next step, ensure that uh, these two strings looks look um, as I'm showing. If you have a specific bucket name, but this string should be the same as, as mine. The next step, you configure test event. You keep this part as is and just change uh, this part of string according to which file you have in the uh, to process folder. Or you can share your screen if you want. No, I don't want to share the screen. I'm I'm not sure what will discord. Oh, we can actually try. Okay, let me share my screen and see what will happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see your screen. Because I'm streaming to Discord, and the thing is, then I click anywhere outside. Right, it's not showing me. So even if you can see it, but my primary window changing so it means i couldn't i don't know what to do but so here for me like if i click test and you see the error message what i have right uh deployed. click to the triangle Where change is, is not deployed maybe you need to deploy and then ah yes oh total mix and j j just click the triangle i want to see a triangle to the right of the test button and click configure uh okay you you put yeah that's separate file right? yes okay Let, let's see the year no or, or maybe it, it mm. took some time to deploy okay yeah i think yes they... uh, unsafe changes it, it looks like it was unsafe changes right yeah yeah because deploy okay good to know yeah you can, you mm -hmm. can take over mm -hmm. sebik uh, did you do this step is it okay for you yes it's okay for me yeah okay that's great will you share max it takes a little time to get used to it. So if every time you make changes in, in the Lambda function, you should not forget to click deploy. And maybe deploy 
uh, like button name, button title might uh, look a bit confusing. But what it does, it just saves the changes. And if you make changes, if you made changes and did not click deploy, uh, the changes uh, won't be saved. Won't be saved, right? Uh, let's proceed to the next step. The next step uh, we will be doing is to create and configure Redshift serverless storage. Okay. We go. Let's open AWS console and go to Redshift. Shift. Max, can you click high? When you type on the button. Yeah. Okay. When you uh, type Redshift, 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 uh, you should pick up this value. As the next step, we need to create a work group. Click create work group. Work group. Fill in the work group name. Capacity it doesn't make sense to set up something big here. In my previous version of, of project, I Should we set up the smallest one 32. because it will it will consume the credits. Let's uh, select eight because the minimum value. Did you check what does mean RPU? No, but let's ask for GPT. No, I think you, you can just yeah, Google R okay. Redshift RPU because every cloud mm. service in some count credits Shield basically then it's Redshift. running, it will consume it. Redshift measures data warehouse capacity and Redshift processing processing units. And you pay how, for the work open load the link will see how much one RPU cost. You need to find serverless. Can you hear me? You need to find serverless. Try to search serverless. Or click on the left. Um, because Dmitry started. Uh, oh, click filling. click uh, on the left side bar serverless. Serverless. Uh -huh. and... oh. Measures the warehouse capacity. But do they have the price for one RPU? It's probably that we choose eight. It means it will consume eight RPUs per per minute, maybe. Not sure. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. In the bottom, you have one cost, so thirty-six cents per RPU per. No, no, no. Okay. So the more if RPUs, you, if assume you have eight RPU per minute, then you can calculate uh -huh. how much it costs. Just multiply this by yeah. eight. So Redshift Serverless is similar to Athena. You pay for what you use. And uh, mm -hmm. you, you have your work work groups to choose the size of your node. And maybe it, it like Snowflake, you can have multiple compute warehouses and one, for example, for marketing, one for data science, another for ETL, and you can control their size and, and how much they're spending. So it's, mm -hmm. it's it, okay. That's why we, we want to choose the smallest possible because it's... Uh -huh. To me to minimize the, the cost. Uh, and the processing units, it, it means CPU or it's like more than CPU? I think it's some ratio between, uh, because you, it, it, it's how they calculate, simplify their cost, they have those credits. Mm -hmm. So because yeah. you have multiple nodes, each node has their size and CPUs and memory. So that's how the, they simplify it. Okay, network and security. Like to keep our project simple, at this time we can uh, leave the settings as default. Uh, I mean that we are not going to create separate uh, virtual private cloud. 
but uh, like the next time or out of this project, you can try uh, to like reproduce the same project, but, but you can also introduce some changes. And you can also try to create, uh, not, not use default uh, VPC, but try to create uh, a new VPC on, on your own with uh, subnets inside and it will be like more more advanced option for now or to spend time on aws just to go for tutorial to create vpc to create public private subnet security groups and just to to understand because every resource you're creating using vpc and subnets that's why it's good to know what is it and right now we're just using default settings there is a limitation for Redshift. Uh, it it requires uh, to have it at least four. I, I don't know the exact number, but there is some requirement. Okay, click next. Uh, like just to understand, we see here that during um, uh, the Redshift uh, creation uh, process, uh, we see two terms used here workgroup and namespace it's not obvious from uh, these titles at least for me so what they mean a workgroup uh, it's the compute layer we just saw that uh, while creating a workgroup we specify the rpus and each rpu has its own price the more uh, rpus you select for your project uh, the more you will be paying for it so a uh, workgroup is a compute layer that manages queries and connects to redshift database it provides the compute resources, scaling and query execution needed to run your SQL queries. So it, it means uh, if to make a parallel to uh, Snowflake, it, it's like a, a warehouse in Snowflake, right? It's it's compute. It's compute part, right, Martin? Yeah, it's basically the compute or size of warehouse. And I think namespace, if we we'll look into Databricks or Snowflake, for me, it looks like Snowflake account. You have your single account and account has multiple databases and then you have your warehouses for compute but some organizations they use more than single snowflake account but it's like completely different so it's it's i think it's like on account level that you can have multiple accounts it's probably the same if you'll create two snowflake trials each trial will have all one account and here mm -hmm. you can i don't in my cases i never I don't know any examples to use multiple namespace. It could be if um, you have big organizations and different departments want to run their own like, dedicated uh, Redshift, like a kind of data mart or just their own data warehouse. In this case, they can mm -hmm. have their own namespace where is no intersection with uh, anything else. It just okay. It's, it's like a logical isolation, right? Yeah, it's logical isolation, but for users, it feels like physical isolation. Okay, just uh, remember this as workgroup is a compute namespace. Uh, it, it's uh, storage. Namespace, the data storage layer where retrieved uh, data resides. It holds databases, schemas, tables, and other objects. I don't know why uh, they are using such not obvious names. Create namespace. This name here. On the database name and password, select custom, customize admin user credential. Okay. Uh, manage admin credentials in AWS Secrets Manager. Do you use Ensure the Secrets that Manager hold... to store the password, or uh -huh. it, it will save by itself the password? It will save, it will create, and uh, in this case, if you select this option, uh, it, it will be created. Uh, username and password, and this will be saved a automatically. Best practice to... for any cloud deployment to store the passwords in AWS Secret Manager or Azure Key Vault. On GCP, I think it has similar idea, and then you can pull, pull like your services, your lambdas, your 
everything can pull from secret manager and uh, yeah that's just how it should work make sure in, in case of aws your im role has access to secret manager to pull the secret then for example use any other service Scroll down to uh, associated IAM roles. Uh, click manage IAM roles. Where is manage IAM roles? Uh, select create IAM role. Okay. Specific. We are going to specify uh, a, a specific S3 bucket, so uh, choose this option. And I could... Um, check boxes for user walk. Do you use anything? Actually, uh, actually, this I I, I didn't use. Yeah, it's up to you another, if you actually, want to. Sometimes on the interview they can ask you about encryption, and we we had the case before discuss encryption over masking. But then you build your data like data warehouse. There is always option to encrypt the data, and for example, if you build data warehouse in production, you always need to consider encrypt your data. For us, mm -hmm. it, yeah, we don't need it. it. It's also additional cost, but the best practice is, yeah, the, you need to, uh, if you talk about production use case, the first is the networking, uh, those VPC subnets. The second is uh, IAM roles and policy permissions. Always yeah. think about least privileged grant, means like only grant, like, like in our example, you only grant I'm role to S3 bucket that we're using, nothing else. And then, uh, and I think for encryption, there are two options, data encryption in REST and encryption in motion. Yeah, that's one is the storing and another when you, you're transferring the data. It's written here that uh, the data in, um, yeah, it's in by already. So yeah. it, it, this option is is not about like whether you are going to use encryption or not. It's about whether you want to use uh, yes. your own customized encryption settings. And I think they used in AWS they used KMS key, like key management service. It's in the same in IAM, or is KMS key. A different algorithm or what's uh, like when do we need to use uh, custom encryption uh, settings maybe you don't trust aws and maybe you i don't but better secure for example you don't use kms you use something else completely well it might be like company governance policies that require using yes. specific yeah. process okay we can uh, check these boxes to generate logs we are not using, uh, we are not uh, going to use them in the project, so it's up to you. Next. Permissions now down the IAM role. I am old. Uh, like so. See this screen, review and create, uh, not down this, just save it to Notepad or somewhere else, this value. You will later need it. Work. Mm. It also available if you click create and go to your new namespace mm. under security and encryptions. You can copy IAM role. 
and you can also see it has two new features relatively new for redshift one is data shares it's the same what for example snowflake data share then you can share data between different accounts and the, another one is zero etl integration i think the idea here that you can assuming you have salesforce or some kind of rds backend database with mysql postgres maybe aurora you can integrate them in your redshift that you will be a kind have access to them you can just list them and it feels like it's part of your redshift database but it basically will kind of like give you access to this database it's like trino right the trino can read external database and feels like you 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 query the the same database. So I, I assume the zero detail integrations give us ability to connect to external databases. And it means you don't need to build pipelines, extract the data, transform and load. You can just qu querying it instantly, for example, with your DBT source and just build. So it's interesting, yeah, what sources it supports. Uh, if you I can see data shares, your, but no, click on Arjuna ATL projects Redshift namespace. This one? Yeah. And here you have your data shares in ZTL. Uh, I uh -huh. don't know how to create it, but this is what I assume how it works for the sharing. It is lost. No, I'm here. There was a question. What, what question? What, what question? What? Okay, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? But what was the question? Jorge just, just asked it. Did you hear him? No. Oh, maybe because I'm muted him in the beginning let me try to see can i unmute him yeah you can ask sergey do you guys hear me i think now you hear me and others maybe don't hear me but the question was do they actually do some sort of replica when the data resides then in your um sort of workspace and namespace where you can do some crowd operations delete update or it's just uh sort of abstraction and just access for reading purposes? I think it's just abstraction because it's like you, you're you not physically own the data in Redshift. It's uh, You just can query the data. And the, the nice thing, if data was changed in backend, you, you, you instantly see those changes. Thank you. So you can go in. Okay, let's move on. Now uh, uh, we created Redshift workgroup and it's time to create connection so that we can uh, connect to our created redshift and open query editor and execute some SQL queries to actually start working there. Just open uh, redshift namespace and query button. you should see uh, the query editor open i think the, the nice thing about redshift query editor that it basically replaces the beaver or like any other local id client but the question is how you're gonna give access to the users example then i tried to use this in the past i always had the problem how i can give access to for example business users because they would need to have some kind of like access of I am role or I am user. And that's why business users usually access it from some kind of, like for example, Metabase or Looker. They, they can submit the SQL queries because the it's, it's a convenient thing to do, but then it's down to how to give access to the business users who doesn't have AWS access. That's the, yeah, I don't, have the solution probably similar to databricks yes, sql for example they... so we don't want to give them like kind of shared user one user can you because now i hear sergey and you not maybe you need to check yeah. the options you need unmute sergey right to see max if you put yeah. the right button on his name and uh, you can try to see yeah do you have the options to uh, unmute 
Yeah. So the next step, uh, we need to create connection. Connection uh, because when I uh, clicked on uh, three dots, it uh, redirect me to another screen where I can uh, create connection using AWS Secret mm -hmm. Manager. For me, I just choose from drop down, uh, yeah, create connection and choose from drop down AWS Secret Manager and choose the secret, yeah. Yes, and you can see here that uh, when we choose this option, AWS Secrets Manager, we see a value here. And it's because uh, on the previous, previous step, when we were creating a Redshift, we selected to uh, create a connection credentials in Secrets Manager. If we did not choose uh, like the, the, that option before, we would um, never seen this here. It, 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 otherwise, it, it would be empty. It's really convenient. You don't need to uh, like uh, write down username, password. You just yeah, select it's, it's it's really it will, it will Till the moment you need to connect it to ETL tools, to BI tools. External. This, yeah, this method not going to work. External connection. And at the same time, you know that user and secret user and password is not secure. If Snowflake connection were two good practice, I know one is using instead of user and password, using user and SSH key. And the second one for mm. users, you can choose the AP, IP addresses ranges. For example, if you know that you connect to Fivetran or Sigma or something else, you know that what IP range they use and you can create this policy to limit your access. This is also maybe a good story for mm -hmm. the interview, how you enforce the security, right? Just moving from user and passwords to something else. That's a good option. So uh, at this step, we need to ensure that um, everybody uh, was able to create connection. If somebody like experience uh, is experiencing problems, if creating connection, just let know. It looks like everything, everyone uh, was done with this step. So uh, as the next step, we are going to create a new database and new schemas and tables to prepare for ingesting uh, the Azuna transform data. Because uh, now we see some default database. Actually, it's a, a few databases here. Dev is created by default when we uh, created Redshift. And also, it Redshift comes with uh, sample data dev. It contains some sample sample data sets. You can see some schemas here, but we are not going to use this. This will be uh, the structure of our new database. Database name will be Azuna, and we will create two schemas: TG for staging table, and uh, DW for data. Uh, warehouse table and inside uh, staging schema we will create staging jobs table to temporarily store and deduplicate daily extracted jobs it will be like classical uh, traditional uh, staging uh, schema it will serve as a uh, transit storage before inserting the data to the main table and in the data warehouse uh, schema we will create jobs table that will keep uh, the, the actual deduplicated data. So let's create a database. To do that, go to the editor. In order to see the newly created uh, database, uh, you can refresh. It's created.
you should see the following structure in this left uh, left side tree. And uh, one of the advantage for you look systems like Five Trend or Airbyte, Miltana, those like that can copy data from sources to the target. The one benefit they have, they can create the table for you in the destination because now you need to know the schema of staging jobs like job ID, job title, and so on. So basically you come up, based on the JSON file, you come up with the schema and you need to create manual. Imagine you have 50 tables and you need to create, even with ChatGPT, you need to create 50 tables. Mm -hmm. And the Fivetran, for example, or Airbyte Miltana, they will do it for you. But I assume not for this kind of API because it's not popular, but something, I don't know, Amplitude, Google, Facebook, for those, it has predefined schema. Mm -hmm that can, yeah, that's just like, if considered like pros and cons. You mean uh, there is no need to manually create this schema, right? But only in the tools in the dimension, but only if they have the available connector. But I assume they don't have connector for this service. But okay. for popular connectors, I had the example before with Google Analytics. And because I export data to S3 in JSON format, then I had to manually create the tables. And if I would mm -hmm. use something else and directly write into Redshift, it can create for me all the tables. Mm -hmm. That's good. Max, uh, I think uh, you missed one step. Uh, when you created a database at Zuna, you forgot to refresh your page. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to I just to... realized that I missed my step here, and it's very important. And it might be tricky to actually spot this. You're right. I need to repeat these steps because uh, I did this stuff. I created schemas and tables, but uh, they were created here in, in the dev database, not in, in that zona. It looks good now. We have two schemas, DW and STG, two tables. You should see the following, uh, the same structure. We are done with uh, Redshift creation and configuration, and we are going to move on to the next step, which is to create uh, and configure Lambda function to load the data we transformed and saved as a csv file and just it into redshift so this last third lambda function uh, it will be doing this stuff it will take csv file from the transform data to migrate s3 folder it will be like an in input for the function then uh, it will load this csv file to the staging table it will deduplicate uh, the data and it will insert uh, the data to uh, our main table in, in DW schema. And after that, uh, it will remove uh, the CSV file from to migrate folder and will copy it to migrated folder, meaning it's processed. So as before, let's go to the uh, Lambda page.
the uh, lambda function I am role to ensure it it's set up correctly. I believe I need to update this string. Did I take it? No, actually, it's good, but you should uh, update it according to your account because if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this number means uh, AWS account identifier. Uh, what what is the the role? It is role that we're using for Redshift, or it's for Lambda function. It's uh, Zuno Lambda role policy. Oh, I see. And it, it's I it has your Lambda number function. by default, right? You just need to make sure. So if you okay. copy paste it, you you need to update it. Where we uh, can find this? Uh... Just go to the page namespace configuration Redshift serverless. I will select your Redshift workgroup, and on this screen you should see it here. This is the number I have, and just uh, like copy and paste this number on your page. Let's see. Thank you. Hmm? Any questions? Is this a mm -hmm. number of account? I believe it is. And also we need so to make sure now that we will... the region everyone has the same US East one, not anything else. Uh -huh. And you can also, if you never visit Secret Manager before, you can also go to Secret Manager and you will see there the secret name that we use and you I think you need a secret RN to copy. This is the secret. It, it created actually two two records. Oh it created one extra for SQL client. Can you open the SQL Workbench? See what's inside. So SQL Workbench is similar to DBiver and the secret name. Can you see retrieve secret value? See what's inside. Is it password just? Engine? No, mm -hmm. it, it gives you the port, the username, the password, the engine. GG. Interesting. Is is it password as a password? Not secure. Interesting. But if I delete it. No, it's fine. Yeah, you can keep it. And if you go to Ajuna ETL project redshift and retrieve the value, what it has. I believe it's a little bit different. Yeah, you can now click retrieve secret value. Yeah, yeah. that's better. And it doesn't have the, this port number, and all yeah. that stuff. Because so... for DBiver, you need the port number, the host, and everything. Mm -hmm. And you, it also probably, you need to specify that it's Redshift serverless, like for extra parameter. So it's not a mistake that it created two records because it, it yeah. has different values. Yeah, right? maybe the new user have zero access to tables because this is Arjuna admin and another one just the user with no access to anything. Just maybe example to show you mm -hmm. connection details. Okay, um, let's copy paste the code. Roll in the function.
So in this code, if I have, for example, uh, another region, uh, US, uh, US East uh, 2, so I should change it here, right? You need to check the redshift, what region you have. What region is your redshift? Yeah, one second, I'm looking where is this information. If you, if you open redshift or query console or redshift and click uh, top right corner, I actually using US West 1. Oh, I'm in it's, Ohio. Uh, you, you're using US East 2. Yeah, that, that's important. That's usually you always have like, account and region. For example, S3 yes, so... doesn't have any regions, it's global. But usually the services, they... And the region means there is raise AWS data center. When you create S3 bucket, you specify the region. It's global, but uh, the region is required when you create a bucket. So should I specify something else in this code? Okay, uh, like a few things yeah. you need to adjust. Uh, one is Redshift region. Another one is if you uh, like decided to use different name for Redshift workgroup, you need to adjust it as well. And the last thing... So uh, the string number 13 is a uh, workgroup name uh, that we created? If you use the, the, the same uh, workgroup name, that uh, you don't need to change anything. So region, it's definitely uh, the thing you need to check. And uh, I'm trying to see. Uh -huh. And uh, the second thing uh, is S3 bucket. It needs to be adjusted as well. S3 bucket. What is Redshift workgroup? Redshift workgroup, uh, it's like compute. But it's what you create? Oh, you so yeah, I use my own name. So it's also need to be adjusted. It's right in the beginning, in this uh, instance. Configuration and the st same steps as before. It, it uh, means, Max, for you, then you create the code Everything what is as a parameters and could be different, you should maybe not hard coded them, but pass them as a environment variables. Makes sense. Okay. The same thing here, they are going to increase timeout. I recommend to set 30 seconds because it might take time. Upload data to Redshift. Or you can speed, uh, like set up something less than 30 seconds because we are not moving a lot of data. Timeout and environment variables. to create a couple of environment variables. The first one is Redshift secret resource identifier. It will point to the uh, secret with our Redshift connections credentials, which we just observed a little ago. And Redshift IAM role. Redshift secret IRN. I am role. Shift secret IRN. Sorry, um, 
you just copied the string from secrets, right? I went to uh, the, the, mm -hmm. the first one or the second one. Uh, the second uh, one with uh, project. Yeah, you should spot this by bucket name at Zuna ATL project. So the one with the Zuna ATL project at Redshift. Mm -hmm. And, and here or we with, are uh, copying secret IRN. If you're having some issues, uh, so after that we uh, invited the environment variables. We uh, uh, right. Hmm? We creating Sorry. a test. What do you mean test? We should to test our uh, lambda function, right? Yeah. If you are done with uh, creating environment variables, the next step will be to test the function. And uh, we will do it the same way as we did with uh, transformation lambda function, because you can see here in the code that we are expecting uh, this value as an input to the lambda function, and we still did not create step function, so we need to hard code this value. And this value it will point to the csv file in the transform data to migrate folder you can pick up any Let, let's do that uh, uh, here we uh, choose create new events you can put any name you want it doesn't matter are going to have just one parameter but if your function it's just for you to know if your function expects uh, a bunch of fields a bunch of parameters you can list them all we change the key name here to our parameter and here the same way we did for transform lambda function we are going to our uh, transform data folder to migrate and what we need to do just copy paste this way uh, for example i want to create and just uh, the freshest file so the whole stream should look like this the folders like the whole path and the file object key i can send in the chat well, let me first input it and then i send the whole json in the chat this allows us to not hard code change uh, the lambda function code and we are just manipulating with input parameters for our lambda function to test it and while working uh, as a part of step function, uh, this lambda function will automatically receive uh, the file key from the previous uh, function. I hope uh, we set up everything correctly, because at this step, many uh, misconfigurations might appear, starting from uh, Roll, continue with uh, connection credentials and uh, with incorrectly set up parameter. So the result of this step should be um, that this file will disappear from here and it should appear in the migrated folder. And you should also uh, see the changes in, in the tables. So we can prepare actually uh, a few SQL scripts to check the, the table contents. 
and I will copy this as well. So to double check, first I'm going to check that I have nothing in my staging table. To execute a particular string, particular query, I just uh, like highlighted, selected just one string, uh, what I need, and click run. If I don't select uh, anything and hit run, it will be trying to execute all the strings. It's pretty convenient. You select what you need, run, and it will execute exactly what you selected. I like it. Let's finally click uh, test. It worked for me. Oh, that's oh. good. But also, we should not forget to rename the bucket as free bucket in the code. Let's check it again. You saw here zeros. Now it should change. Oh, looks like for me it didn't work. <laughs> it's interesting because I, I don't see any errors here, but for some reason my uh, database and my tables are empty. That's very disappointing. It's migrated here. And it should disappear from here. The next step, make sure that you have data inside the tables. Mm -hmm. I think your logic is doing what it's doing, but it looks a bit strange for me. Just so you you have the file in the S3, then you push this file into staging table that is right, and mm -hmm. then uh, before you push into staging table, you truncate this table. So it means your staging table is a kind of temporary staging table, and it also means that you and then you're trying to incrementally adding data into dw jobs right because dw this you can think about as a like layer with your gold layer with the tables so the ideal sequence of the steps i can i can write them in, let me open the chat and i will write them in the chat so the step one copy into TMP staging jobs uh, and truncate it before. So th these steps, it's exactly what you're doing, but you just will do it into TMP table. The second part you doing, uh, you move from TMP to your historical staging and this works in the way it's first you delete from staging jobs uh, where for example you delete staging jobs where um with some logic what you did usually it's by the timestamps and there are two ways i will tell about and then like yeah and then 2.2 .2, insert into staging jobs select star uh, from tmp staging jobs and also after star you would add like for example current uh, timestamp as atl time stamp yeah this what you're doing does it make sense those steps i'm looking and then this is you you build the um, your staging table so your staging will have the history of everything and then now you can like build your gold layer your approach is, is fine it's giving you what you want but 
for me it looks like anti-pattern so and then you build your gold layer you maybe do you you like you can query staging jobs and do some aggregation kind so your dw table it might be your some fact table that you want to use in reporting and staging is your raw data and that's why yeah, i'm splitting between uh, like temporary where i just keep one slice of data versus staging there i keep all data and i adding one metadata column like current timestamp i also can see when last time the data was loaded and so on and i also have delete and alternative way because this only works for append base and for example then we query api it works fine but imagine but this could be challenges for example if you querying database with the user's id right and your user id might have timestamp updated or created at and then obviously just appending user's id doesn't work because user id always the same it just might have different parameters that's why alternative way and it it will work also for this so you do all the same like so basically you do step one the same but the step two you will do merge into or absurd based on primary key for building staging the merge command will basically replace two steps i have two one two two when i del first delete and then insert and if we will talk about dbt incremental strategy this is actually what dbt gives you then you choose your strategy incremental strategy you can use delete and insert or the merge right or full the third one will be the third reload full reload that's it that's mm -hmm. three methods you, you can have okay um so i actually did review as well this before and originally didn't first i tried to understand uh but i think sort of what you're saying dima i think what you're saying is that the problem is that the data is there is no history stored and basically the csc file converting right away to the sort of like goal table mm -hmm. and uh, so it would be definitely good to because so what we do in, in my work we actually do same what max does the only difference is we pre-process data in databricks then azure scale is our target and then sort of the staging in azure scale is doing same as max but the thing is difference is we do have history in delta so that's why but his pattern didn't i i i'm actually don't know then we query and maybe question to max max then we query api the api returns us data for full history or last two days last day last 24 hours? Last, uh, every time every every invocation is just two last days okay two last days so but it means you you overlapping it right yeah that's why either merge or delete will go so for example then if you want to delete you delete last two days from your historical table and then insert last two days or if you do the merge into it do but i think your approach then you have so can i can i protect him a little i do agree about the history but actually his does do duplicate because he and again i don't know how that effective to join the the goal table like the production uh, target table but he does join the staging to target table and he says where job id is null so basically it means he does sort of do duplication when he joins staging to target and it means when there is no match between staging and target that's where he actually inserts them so he does sort of do duplication but this, by this yeah it is the duplication to join uh staging and dw layer but it's a, the merge command right but it only yeah yeah it, it's basically part of the merge only first half or the second half of the merge command yeah i mean what i was thinking about is that i mean this is a good approach but the thing is if target table is huge you don't really actually it's a good idea to join large table to a small table anyway um 
And if target table is huge, this join might be quite expensive anyway. Uh, but that's my just yeah, because also, and also need to make sure that job ID is consistent. I, I don't know. So for me, this kind of join is you need to be 100% sure. My approach, it doesn't care, right? It, for, for, the, for the merge command, you only care about primary key. For, and for the yeah. delete and short, you only think about that history never change. You're just appending. The most important thing, uh, I think, for independent, idempotent ETL. So, yeah, the, the most important thing that our jobs, idempot so if you will gonna run our lambda functions, step functions like five times a day. We don't yeah. want to have any crazy outcome. It has to produce same result every yeah. time you run. Yeah. But it, cool. it, it, yeah, this but is actually a very interesting step in the ETL in general. For those two methods, I'm doing like 95% of my jobs. That's what I wrote recently about Snowflake store procedures. So I do it exactly this. My data factory extracting the data. I'm pushing to small table, TMP. And then from this, I'm building a history either like with merge or delete and insert. And it works for yeah, everything. I recently found in one of the projects in the I was working on, unfortunately, merge didn't work well because the primary keys, like sort of, it's a composite key and it wasn't cons sort of consistent. So the merge produce actually sort of duplicates in a way because the primary key wasn't consistent so we, we went to delete and insert route i just want to highlight recently vlad when he was working with five tran he found that actually five tran because i mentioned that the five tran will create your tables in staging it's actually creating the primary key in snowflake and then for example then if you for example, i want to do the merge statement or i want to do the we use it for dbt unique test and we like, you know, yeah. you have like 100 tables, need to find the unique key, it's crazy. But the five try and create the unique key for each of the table because it's using the unique key for this incremental load under hood. Mm -hmm. And it's super nice that the five try and for all the tables we're using, it's create the unique key. So you just see the configuration of the table and you see the unique key. And it's even create foreign keys, what table with what table like connecting together for this integrity test. Next time. Okay, I completely agree with you guys, uh, but you know, I, I, I'm aware of uh, merge commands and absurd commands, and at my work, uh, we also use absurd, and I thought I could use it in this project, but what I found, maybe I'm not mistaken and you correct me, uh, it looks like Redshift doesn't support uh, merge command, and that's why I had to use uh, this trick to create no, this. It, it support this it should support absurd. because it's merge and absurd is the same. Uh, so no, you just type redshift absurd. That's it. Absurd. Yeah, that's exactly. It. So it like does redshift has transactions in um, classic databases? In redshift, you can use transactions like rollback and commit. For example, you can open the transaction, start like executing commands and then close the transaction. But yeah, that's example like begin and end transaction. But I, I, I never use it in Redshift. I assuming it's every SQL query is like just the, the transaction. Well, you see what, so the data like Delta doesn't have transactions. Like sort of, it is AC transactions, but if, for example, if I want to chain, delete and insert, it actually doesn't work that way. It, it's a two separate transaction. That's why it's in Delta for now, it's a bit tricky actually to delete and insert because you do have to sort of mark them to be deleted. And then we insert your transaction. You can delete your, the old transactions. And so that's why we, like, we couldn't do merge in Delta. So we moved to do delete and insert actually in SQL because it does support transactions. So if my delete transaction failed, then I can actually roll everything back and don't insert. So it's um, yeah, I'm honestly the things we do with those transactions. And by the way, Sergey, if you come to the point that you're going to build the project, then you can, for example, transactions topics is interesting, like those delete and insert topics interesting. Another thing you, you try to use, you talk about orchestration one. So whenever you will be ready, now you know the format of this. Then I'm continuing staying silent.
when I get a project, I can talk. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, that's the the point. I mean, we should talk. Yeah. I just encourage you to do the project too, because the uh... you bring really good points, and I think it's honestly hard to understand, especially for people who never use it. So that's why I just encourage you that it would be nice to cover as well those topics in your projects. But topics, yeah. The main idea of those projects, not that we're doing this, but actually we're discussing it. Is it what's what's the alternative? I agree. All questions welcome. It looks like Redshift supports the merge function, so I'll try to use that. I don't know why I could not find it before, and I hope it works actually. But uh, I agree that uh, my current solution using this join, uh, it's kind of well, not best practice, definitely. And it's good for this uh, small pet project, but if you uh, have really large uh, production database, it might be bottleneck here, right? Uh, the test uh, my function is uh, working but uh, yeah as like uh, max i can't see uh, anything in my uh, query it's an interesting thing and dmitry sergey uh, maybe you know why it, it may happen i i don't because see it's either. Very... so the if you want to test it if you copy paste um go back to your lambda lambda log um, copy paste the um, copy command copy step and then yeah because you, that's the simple just execute this in your query editor and see i did this before and uh, it looks like it will work this way but when i launch the step function it uh, does not work always so it, it might work once, but then I do next time it, it doesn't work. Uh, then I don't know what else because if I will run the copy command, oh, then I run the copy command, it, it fails for me. It tells me it couldn't find the file. Interesting. Because it's uh, already in a migrated folder, I think. The file uh, disappears. Oh, uh, it moved the file but didn't load it, right? Let's check this hypothesis. We can uh, disable the code to uh, move the object. It can be just one. Uh, you need to comment out just this string. When I uh, use just copy uh, in the Redshift, uh, it works, and now I see the info in my table. So it's because of this move? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you think it's moving file before it's copy. No, if if it will move file before it copy, you get the error message that file not exist. So it's it it see it, it can see the file. Another thing what we can check, if we go to Redshift, it should show us a query history somewhere. Query editor, where is it? Found oh, history. Oh, I just found that my Redshift serverless have 300 of free trail credits that will expire uh, January 4th, 2025. Oh, I found a mistake. It looks like 
I tried to insert in the dev database. Oh, because you didn't specify the database name and default one is a dev, right? Yeah, but I thought I specified it. It should be here. You see? Yes, yeah, it should be. Yeah. But it looks like it ignores it. Because the, then we create the namespace first, we create uh, in dev schemas. Because I think I also create in my dev this schema and table. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I, I, I should check the dev schema table. Maybe it's there. Oh, I don't have data there either. Mm -hmm. It worked for me before, but uh, like before this project, no, I uh, we, we didn't have to ever... specify the full path. That definitely makes sense. You mean here in this in query? Your code, but it... everywhere. But... Oh, okay, it's here. Then I'm wrong. It looks very strange. And uh, in query history, what did you see? In query history, where is query history? But it's history for everything, right? Can we see the, that where is Lambda running it? I can see it. It's maybe, all select. Maybe it's only. Ah, maybe this one. Uh, it, it was run against dev database, not against Adzuna. It looks wrong. But uh, like it's uh, anyway, it's uh, it's indicated as successful. And <laughs> I don't see the data neither in Adzuna database nor in dev database. So it looks strange. And what disappoints me here that like logs show everything's good. A query execution shows everything's good, <laughs> but uh, what, it doesn't. <laughs> what you can do in your Lambda, maybe adding select. I'm curious if we'll do select star from the table limit five. Will it query table and show us something? Uh, at least I, I think we, we should not touch uh, the Lambda at all. Uh, the first step to troubleshoot, we need to ensure that manual co command work. So. Uh, we, we can the, use the manual command work we just tested, right? For me, it doesn't work. Oh, it... For me, Vlad, did it Not work yet. for you? The manual command? I copy paste the copy command, uh, yeah, and uh, change uh, the folder uh, to migrate uh, uh, from to migrate to migrated uh, in the path. And yeah, it works and data uh, was. Load it into the table. Interesting. Let me check it again. Here I replaced uh, the folder to migrate and uh, it worked. This one. Why it, it shows uh, like five different tabs here when I execute this? This is what I missed, and it's not obvious because oh, I see on, on it, this oh, tab. You see, it tells you that you kind of like have different region between uh, maybe this transaction running every, every command new window, but it's telling you that a region is different. What does it mean? So it the cluster and region cluster have one region addressed by this kind of different from this cluster <laughs> but i was thinking s3 bucket doesn't have any regions 
No, I, I can show it to you. Oh, you have to. Ah, give a second. Yes, when you create bucket, you need to specify uh, which region you, you are going to operate. Okay, now Redshift, mm -hmm. where, where do you need to specify it? It's interesting. But what Let's was find the error? It. My regions in uh, policy document. In my code, it also... One thing I know about all data engineering work and projects always should be ah, in the region. I found it. <laughs> What was the US is two and here it's US is one. You see? So basically what we I need, need to check to our buckets. Uh, do I need to change uh the region somewhere for uh, redshift? I, I uh, can see I don't think it's you you able to switch the region you need to recreate it. But uh, you think they should be in the same region? Your region here is is one, so and your bucket is uh, region uh, is two. If I change this, is it enough, or I need to change the region somewhere in try, the redshift city? Change only. In situations like this, it's uh, like where you spend the most time while doing the project. Yes. Ah, oh, redshift endpoint. Oh, so somewhere I need to uh, change the region. What's the best way to change it? Region US is ah, it's one. So, what will be the quickest way? So for example, for me, I had always US West one everywhere, but still, still it didn't pass, and it didn't. Yeah, we changed uh, every uh, settings everywhere because I used uh, East two, and uh, in every uh, code, it was uh, East one. So I changed it everywhere, but it's still. Doesn't work properly. You need to check, uh, like you need to find the years. For some reason, data uh, doesn't deliver to our table, right? Do, do we have the, the data in, in the JSON file? Maybe we can. Yes. Can, can we open the JSON file? You can download it from Bucket. Uh, I'm going to recreate the Bucket. Uh, it will be easier. Um, yes, it's the one. Guys, I think uh, maybe we uh, should stop on this uh, step and try to find an error 
till the next session because it's almost uh, yeah. two hours. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. I'm planning also to stick to two hours per session. And next week we can doing a uh, step function. Step function huh? yeah, is the last one. Sense. Not actually step function is almost the last one. After that, uh, the, the last step is to create uh, uh, Google, uh, oh, it's called BI. Oh, Google, Looker. Looker? Data Looker Studio. Studio. Oh, mm -hmm. Sounds good. Google Studio connected to the uh, um, uh, Redshift and first to configure Redshift to be publicly accessible, then to create connection because it's it's also tricky to create connection and there are some challenges on on this way how uh, about how to to connect to it. It's not easy. Let's stop it at this stage. At least everybody knows uh, how it should work and uh, let's let, let's complete this. What's the folder purpose uh, like to migrate and migrate it? It's the after data is loading, it's moving there. Maybe it's redundant here. It's like to indicate that uh, something needs to be processed and uh, when it's like to process folder and uh, when it's processed, it's it's no long, longer in the to process folder. It moves to process folder. My previous project version relies on uh, the event when uh, a file is created in specific folder. I don't know if in this implementation using step function it, it's needed. So, okay, I, I have one question for you. Um, you using mm -hmm. the copy command from JSON file as mm -hmm. CSV. Why it's not format as JSON? JSON. So you have the JSON. Uh, I, I just uh, wanted to like experiment with different formats. But here, format as CSV delimiter, you specify source file format. So if you take the JSON format and you tell Redshift it is CSV, I don't think it's going to work. Because if, if you ex file extension JSON, your file is JSON, you should load format as a JSON. You shouldn't mess, mess up with CSV. Does it make sense? No, but uh, like in, initially the source data file is JSON, right? Yeah. Then the second lambda function uh, ingests it, it transforms it and save it as CSV, as a proper CSV. Okay. And only when and the... In your logs, for example, from my logs, I huh? have this. Let me share in chat. So I'm using the wrong. So you could... And Vlad, what do you have in your logs? In my logs, I specify the file path to the JSON. And uh, no, 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 you are doing it wrong. You shouldn't do this way. You yeah, should. But uh, I'm getting this from folder process, right? But the folder process should have the CSV file. No, the process is okay. You should look at the, um, the initial data. folder. Raw, raw oh. data, it's always JSON. And okay. it has two states or two subfolders to process a process, but it's all about JSON data. And when we are talking about CSV, it's different folder, it's transform data. Okay, then I give the wrong path. That, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. me. Maybe it's a complicated thing. I am not sure if uh, the, no, the I, same I, structure. I can tell you for sure that your API, you hit the API. And then you're moving files around. That's very bad. What should be? You hit the API. You save the, the JSON push to the Redshift. That's it. Maybe because we want to see how the Lambda works and like play with Lambda, it's fine. But you never mm -hmm. want to do this in production. Like just to, to convert JSON to CSV and CSV. Because you see, it's very, very easy to... We, we mistake it. Multiple times. More stacks, more room to 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 like right to, yeah. to make a mistake. But I wanted to say that I think I because I had some questions, Mitri, you had, and I thought you Max, you have two different folders migrated or to be migrated because you did, didn't want to reprocess same file every time, so you moved it out of the way. So next time the function runs, it kind of doesn't process it once again. That was my thought because we have a super stupid process that we do and for some reason the person didn't think in that project well i'm sure you like think it through such a big project but he moved it out of the way just to make sure he knows which he processed he didn't even have any login he just this was his way to show that this has been processed and should be processed once again 
So I want to quickly try to change the S3 object path to CSV and run Lambda one more time. I'm just curious. It should work for you because uh, I I uh, figured out my, my mistake and it's like a region misconfiguration. Let's let's just wait uh, one one second while I will do this. So now I'm passing this failure. Mm -hmm. It looks correct. Oh, it's interesting. I click test and I think it's run test. Oh no, it's run maybe once. Let me check. This is my test output this is what yes i'm and now i can try to query and see if i have data it didn't work for you the data oh, is i not... have the data in staging table and i oh. assume I it, it, should, it should be the same in, in uh, data warehouse table yes i just will query it too so i yeah i think i have different error for me i just use the json file but we both hit the same problem. For you, you have some mistakes and Lambda didn't show us, right? About region or about, for me, I'm using the JSON format and copy, and I don't know why it didn't tell me anything. So I think it just trying to read it, didn't read and just failed quietly. That's weird. But yeah, for me, it worked now. So I think, mm -hmm. I think for, yeah, Vlad, for you also should work. If the yeah, same region, right rows and everything i need to check the origin and uh, other so your lo log output should be similar as mine we this have record the... i will test this record and if it's gonna work i will upload to twitch and we'll start uh recording the projects i i, th oh. I think for one of the projects i want to do soon mm -hmm. maybe for glue because this week I already did uh, one of Glue project, and I think Sergey and Vlad was there for Ivanshu. So I I probably want to wrap it as a, as a project and doing the project, but maybe adding some Terraform steps to create in resources with Terraform instead of cloud formation. Sounds good. Okay, thank you everyone. See you. Yeah. yeah.